Well, here we are again. I thought I'd show you a little bit of the finish idea that I do on some of the rifles and pistols and other objects that I make. If I don't paint it like I do with folk art stuff, chip carving pieces, then I will use what's called ferric nitrate, which is a combination of nitric acid, four parts water, and nails. The old iron nails. These are wrought iron nails. I just happen to have some that I've kept for just this purpose. And you drop that into the acid, which is one part nitric, four parts water, and you form this ferric nitrate. And it's basically a weakened solution after the acid has eaten up all the iron in it. When you make it, the chemical reaction gets hot. You always add acid to water, never water to acid. So it'd be safe in what you're performing here and wear the proper eyewear, gloves, aprons, and whatever you need to be safe with this stuff. <clears throat> what you typically will do, and take a Q-tip or rag or whatever, and put it on the piece of wood. This happens to be a highly figured piece of curly maple that I was building a gun out of a while back. and So we're just kind of quickly throwing this stuff on there and getting a little bit on the surface. Now you'll see when I start using the hot air gun to get the transformation to happen, the wood will change colors. If I want a real dark in the dark spots in this, I could use tannic acid or oak bark solution that's been heated, put a layer of that on the wood, put this ferric nitrate over top of that, and then heat it with the hot air gun to find the magic. I'm going to pop this open a little bit, so hopefully you can see this change colors in the next minute or so. Always keep your either your workpiece moving or your hot air gun. If you don't and you stall, you're going to burn something. Hopefully it's just your fingers and that will teach you to only do it once. Now you start to see the color starting to change on this. You're driving the moisture out and you're leaving the, the molecules of iron into the woods, from what I've been told. And it gets you a really nice honey brown colors, depending on the concentration of nitric and iron. <clears throat> you don't really want to use steel wool. Steel wool has other alloys in it, like chromium, which will impart a green cast to your stain. And I don't particularly like that. Most of us don't. That we're, that's doing historical stuff. Well, now we get an idea of the color changed on the piece of wood. So now to show you what it looks like, we've got a little damp rag here. And see if we can get a little bit of water on here to get that color to pop a little bit more. So hopefully you can see the color changes. And if you don't see it there, here's a little stub of a hammer handle that I had made up out of curly ash that I used the same treatment on. And you can see the curl in the ash glistens a little bit. The dark spot is the softer grains, and then the bright spots is the harder grain. So when you're scraping along here, you'll get this washboard effect out of it, and that will impart another f feeling to the wood. So like on a rifle, you prefer to have that washboard, that early style of scraped and burnished finish instead of a glossy, high sheen, sanded finish with uh, steel wool or something like that. I prefer a scraped and finished surface and ferric nitrate is my stain of choice. Just remember that when you're making up this ferric nitrate solution, you want to do that outside. If it fumes up, do not breathe the fumes. They're dangerous. Have a dish of water or ice in there because chemical reaction will make it hot in that vessel. Being glass. Don't use any kind of metals or enamels. I would say Pyrex glass would be the best. And if you don't have a hot air gun, you can use the burner on a stove. Electric stoves work better. Forge fire, the coals of a forge fire will also do the same thing. You could use a gas stove probably 
but now you have a higher potential for burning your work bee. So always remember to keep it moving and don't stop. If it does, then all the time you've put into whatever object that you've been making has just been for naught. Thank you for joining me down here in my favorite little dungeon, my dank and dark way of uh, living my life. <laughs> Thank you, folks. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!